by costume jewelry, which is what we typically think of as the things that are trendy. They pop in, they pop out, um, not precious metals, not um, super expensive, can be as cheap as maybe $5 or you know, up to like 100, 150. But it's a lot more trend-based and the type of thing that you would see on the main floor of um, like a Macy's or a, a Belk or a regular department store. Mass-produced metal, coatings, faux stones, faux gems, plastics can be used as well. Um, and last category is ethnic jewelry. Um, so from all over the world, they can be specific to culture or origin. Um, and you know, turquoise kind of falls in this category as well um, from a Native American standpoint. And that is usually the last category of jewelry. Sorry, now I'm crunching my, my mitt. Um, I love this recap from Vogue, which is the um, fall runway trends for all accessories, but since this is our um, number one accessory uh, speaker we have this semester, I wanted to touch on some of the real life 11 accessory trends from fall 2023 that you will actually wear. <clears throat> they have the wrap, all wrapped up they call it. Um, you can see it walking the runway in a variety of different ways. I'm sorry if this was not showing to you. Okay. Um, the over the top wrap. <sighs> sorry. Why is it not showing? There we go. <laughs> over the top beautiful wrap. Um, and done in different ways with embroidery and um, flair, as we saw in the first one here in a beautiful print. Some feathers on uh, that rock, the one right here from Michael Kors. <clears throat> um, the next big accessory would be uh, the well appointed bag. I wish there was a better way to show this. I'm sorry about the way that the screen is showing. Um, then they call it handle with care, some cool accessory flair. I like the telephone one in particular. A higher power. So for higher for power and practicality, nothing beats the over the knee boot except that it is the thigh high style. So that's a big trend coming out. Gate, precious metals. You can see here, um, as exemplified in those handbags. Sorry. Soft footing. Um, there's a very interesting one here with kind of a raccoonish look to it, but there's something very tender about enveloping your feet in soft faux fur as you go about your day. Um, carry things close. Fall's biggest bags weren't slung from the shoulder, but clutched under the arm. Saw that a lot walking the runway this, this year. <clears throat> and made for walking. Whether combat style, buckled, or high hiking inspired, lace up boot is an essential part of fall accessories. And then seeing red. Lots and lots of red out there on the runway, um, and it, fil it f fed over from ready wear into accessories as well. And the blow up the logo. Seeing more and more of the logo taking over um, across accessories and, as well as in uh, ready to wear. The last one. Um, 2020 vision. So, uh, glasses. Eyeglasses are shorthand for wanting to see clearly, for seeking out comfortable truths. It's strange to consider eyeglasses a necessity for those who wear them as a runway trend, we know, but it's even weirder to think these models wearing glasses is an extremely rare occurrence. So just to touch on all of those before we dive into our guest today. <clears throat> okay. So um, I want to welcome uh, Ranjana Khan to the, to the stage with me. She was born and raised in Mumbai, India. Um, started her career in fashion as an international model. Immersed in culture that embraces vibrant colors and unique textures, Khan grew inspiration from the detailed hand embroidery of artisans whose skills have been passed down and perfected generationally over centuries. In the 1990s, she started collaborating with European designers by creating embroidery concepts for Lanva, Balenciaga, uh, McQueen, Valentino, Armani, Armani Privé, among others. 
And after 30 years in the business, she launched her own jewelry brand in 2008. Uh, Ranjana Khan's jewelry uses materials such as, such as seashells, beetle wings, and feathers to craft wildly unique statement earrings worn by the likes of Beyonce, Michelle Obama, and Cardi B. Thank you for being here today. <laughs> Excitingly, she also brought with her some um, of her product to showcase to you all. Mm -hmm. I don't know, do you want to lead with that? Uh, no, I just no. wanted to keep okay. it, uh, get it more set up. Perfect. Yeah. And then the earrings to go. Okay, awesome. <laughs> what was that? Should I pass it over? Yeah, why not? Do you want, do you want to start by talking a little bit okay. about the brand? Let, let me say so. Uh, should I start at the beginning or maybe? Yeah. Not? Well. Let's talk about the brand and then we can go backtrack okay. on how you got here. And I'll, I'll actually pull up your website okay. for students to see while, you're, while we're talking. So, uh, where do I begin? <laughs> um, I was born and raised in India. Um, I was a model at 16, 17, and um, loved, I could have, it's, it was, the path I was going to take was either college or no college. And when I, when I did get into college, it was uh, not something you want to hear, but that, that was my trajectory, um, was psychology and history, those are subjects. And I knew I was just going to spend four years of something that I may not even stick with. And fashion has always been in my head. And so I, after, doing, after modeling for a couple of years, at age 20, I started to produce the shows, fashion shows. And we took a show to Germany, and that gave me a lot of experience and confidence that, wow, I can do this. Uh, and just from, I mean, it started so young, and then just from that could just uh, take off and went across the world um, with a lot of shows, traveled with uh, my troupe and everything, just wow. was under 24. <laughs> then at 24, I was going to have an arranged marriage to a guy in Canada, and I did not want to do that. Uh, but I told my parents I would go and see him, and I did, and had a visa for the States. And I came to America and never left. <laughs> and um, again, it stayed, and I met and married uh, my now husband, Naeem Khan, I don't know if you know him. He's a fashion designer. And he was Halston's assistant, so it was a great spot to just you know, just land right in the middle of fashion. Our first date was Studio 54, and you know, meeting with Andy Warhol, and that, that whole crowd was quite sensational and exciting. We had no idea what kind of history we were in the middle of, zero, but it was just lucky that that happened. And Naeem, uh, Naeem's family, uh, my husband's family was, um, they, they hand embroidered artisans, and that's why I wanted to see what, what, we, what you can create. Um, and uh, so I just, we decided to have, he wanted to leave Halston. Halston hours were crazy. I could be at work all day, early, and then go, had to go at night to this party or that party. And it was after a while, it was, we couldn't take it anymore. And we, we actually ran, escaped to LA and started uh, his own collection called Riazi. And uh, from 1980 to 1983, we did like LA, but it did very well. We bought a home there and, and thought that, you know, the Hollywood thing would be fun, but they all want to borrow your stuff and wear it and give you some, you know, some, uh, say your name somewhere here and there and send it back. Didn't work out. We came back to New York and started uh, uh, the collection called Piazzi and uh, um, of clothing, hand embroidered clothing. Now this uh, uh, hand embroidery is ancient in India. It's a man's profession. It's only men that hand embroider. And uh, it's passed down from father to son because it's very difficult to, uh, there's many stitches there's, and there's either a stick needle or a crochet needle. And you, it, it takes a lot to learn these. There's over a thousand stitches, French knots and, uh, drop stitch and a sequin with the French knot and this, you'll see the details on some of those uh, swatches that I have. And um, 
so I was very much involved with the fashion thing. And then I had two children and didn't work at all for 10 years, but our business was doing well till I decided in 97 to start my own company away from what Naeem was doing. Um, and uh, it was called Phoenix. And I took, I, I created swatches and took them to designers in Europe, all over Europe, um, and showed them my ideas, my design ideas. And it was from the first day, my first uh, um, designer was Jill Sander. And cold call Hamburg, Germany, went there. She loved what I had to offer. And she never used embroidery to start with. It's not uh, a label like that. They, you know, smart, elegant, beautifully cut clothing, the best fabrics. And uh, it, it, it really blew my mind that she just went right away and we, we did a very big collection with her. And then it just, the word spread, assistants from her company, talked to assistants from IFA, Alberto Ferretti, and, and so on. And, and then, uh, uh, it just grew. It was my husband called it a cash cow because it was, uh, it was, if to have an to have an expertise in one thing is important. You find that one thing. Embroidery is mine, and it's it's it so happened that it fell into my lap, and uh, I mean I I could have taken <clears throat> it and not be interested or you know and and I would have, I would have I don't know what I would be doing now, but it's the last. 40 years now that it's part of my life. And uh, my sons, our sons, are the fourth generation. It's a 103 year old company. They're the fourth generation in the embroidery uh, world. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it's, it's in their DNA. Yeah. And, and, and definitely I learned it. And uh, so the, the jewelry that I design is, no one does that kind of jewelry at all because it's only hand embroidered. It's but very unique materials together. So you take a look. So why don't you, yeah, put the, show the jewelry. Yes. So that's a neckline. If you can just hold it up and you'll see. Um, I worked with Elber Elbaz of Lanban. Do you know who he is, who he was? He passed away during COVID. He got COVID and sadly left this world. Um, he. He, I worked very, very closely with him. So that was a belt. To put it the other way, it was. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, like that. So you see, it has wow. always a meaningful pattern. And the belt. Um, uh, that was for Jean Paul Gaultier. Um, so we. Uh, I was in '03 is when I started to work with Albert Elbaz uh, in Paris, London. And um, Janine Lanman, he had taken over from her. I mean, she started it in the 30s, but the idea was to bring her back, to bring her sensibility back. And she loved pearls, but he wanted to have pearls that are just something else. Frangina, make it something, something soft. How can I make pearls soft? So I just told him to give me a, a, a bit of tool, needle and thread, and I'll be back the next day in Paris. I went back to my hotel. That's the thing, you just have to immediately go and jump to it. How, how am I going to make this, these pearl socks? I, I made a tube, sewed it my, with my hands, uh, put a, a tube of tool in, in, made it inside, I mean outside in, and uh, I put a pearl, I made a knot. Do you remember those pearl, tool covered pearls? Yeah. That was my idea. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, we sold 60,000 strands. Oh my gosh. Like 30,000, 30 million retail. It was, it was mm. written about in Newsweek and Time for a phenomenal way of where uh, jewelry is going. Wow. So it was basically a, a black, what I, the first one I made was out of a pink tool. I still have it because it's my archive. I made it with my own hands. But it's a tube of tool, a white pearl and a knot, a pearl and a knot. And then the ends were 18 inches of tool. So you would actually just tie it around your neck. And uh, if you look for it, it's, uh, they were iconic. Um, it's still available on eBay for more than it sold for in those days. <laughs> and that was a skirt for Fendi uh, that 
it was part of it. That was the first swatch. It's beautiful. And so metallic sequins. It's copper and brass and silver. And so is all that hand sewn? All hand sewn. Everything is hand sewn. Wow. Everything is it. Show me that t-shirt with that, that, that top of that. Yes, this is, this is a swatch that I made uh, from, from which we, we did a lot of work with this. So it's just the stippling, yeah, it's a, a t-shirt. It's a stippling effect. It's just how far you place the dots to create the breast and the abs. And now, now Bergdorf saw that swatch the other day. We had a meeting at home. Uh, I have a home office. And she came over and she saw one of these things. I want t-shirts because now, forget about freeing the nipple, they just want to put, you know, just like be naked. You know? so it's, it's changed a lot in the last 10 years. And yeah. <laughs> and, and I love it. So now we have a whole collection of this coming to, with pants, uh, with, with the, you know, the shape of the butt, shape of your Under your muscle. brand name. Yes, yes, yes. But yes, because yes. it's not, nothing like that. No, on your it's site a butt. Yet. No, 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 it's a butt too. It's, it's, they're waiting for me to, so we, yeah, yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah, very exciting. Yeah. That's great. So if you look at that pair of earrings, you see all kinds of wow. things. Wow. You know, it's uh, feathers and silk thread and Keep raffia. Going. And they're all clip-ons. And Thank the clip-ons are really, really comfortable. Um, you know, they're big and light uh, as air, so you can really wear them and 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 not feel like you, you want to take them off or you're and you forget how big they are, and suddenly you look at the seven of them and it's like, like really hard. <laughs> the, the black and white feather ones. Yeah, those, those are my favorite right now. But yes. Uh, I love that. And so. Um, Something little. <laughs> yes. Where did where will these be produced? Well, everything in India. And it's all, yes, in India. everything is produced in India. <clears throat> um, yeah, that's where my uh, my factories are, and that's where most of my people work. Uh, here in New York, it's it's just like two or three people that work. For me. Yeah. Right okay. now, it's just Char. Char. <laughs> yeah. But but you know, it's just I'm just in the process of uh, hiring. Uh, yeah. Charlie um, took this class in the fall semester and is out working uh, in PR. Maybe doing more than that, I don't know. Yes, he is. Right <laughs> yeah. now he's doing everything. Yeah. <laughs> Production. Jack of all trades. Yeah, that's exactly. great. <laughs> well, um, taking it way back to the beginning, I wonder if you could, unless you want to keep going with the product, which we can also. No, I mean, they can, we can, we can take it interludes. Um, what was it like working in the modeling uh, industry? And I know it, you know, in India, like, wow. yeah. um, <laughs> I mean, this was in 73, a long time ago. So uh, it was very different. Uh, uh, now it's, it's very much like it is here. Yeah. You know, it's very organized and, and, and the, it's regulated uh -huh. and how many hours you work and you know the breaks before it was just like you know you, you, you make it or you don't there was uh that's how naim knew me he's he's three years younger we were in the same school but he knew me because he saw me on you know billboards and whatever and so it was uh yes there were five top models in, in yeah. india and so we we traveled a lot and uh, so whatever shows that we had to do we went uh, to russia for in 1977 uh, for a trade show. Wow. It was a trade center and we did this show uh, and we met Brezhnev. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he came and saw the show. Uh, so yeah, we, we did get to travel a bit. It was, it was fun. Yeah. But I got to learn about uh, how clothes look on you, how you feel in your clothes and, and, and just, you know, um, the sari. In India, we wear the sari. It's six, eight yards, depending on the style. And uh, it takes a minute to put on, really, when you, in, to drape it. It's, you can go so fast and put it on, but it's, it's, a, it's an evening dress, in my opinion. You know, it, even a sari. And they wear, uh, my mother wore a sari of her whole life. She had a pajama sari, which is made out of mama, very, very soft cotton. So, it, you know, it, for, to go out, it would be a silk 
embroidered whatever, and in the morning it's a crisp white sari. But it's a lot of fabric to, so I grew up watching this. And, and then I, you know, I wear a sari so rarely, it's like, <laughs> take care of it the whole evening, you can't just like, you know, move fast in it, it's quite crazy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, modeling was interesting. It really made me realize uh, my style. Uh -huh. How I, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not trendy. I don't like to follow trends ever. Yeah. Never have. Uh, kind of not even fashionable. I'm just uh, stylish. Fashion. It's style. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's my style. It's unique. It's I, you know, I'll wear. I, I have my clothes from. 40 years ago. Wow. I've only worn clothes that I've liked and I enjoy and, you know, upscale, you know, downscale, yeah. cargo pants, thanks to you. <laughs> and I'm dressing differently, but it's fun to to explore everything. But modeling got me to to able to, to be able to love and enjoy and, and uh, widen my perspective. To use to, uh, um, the clothes that, I mean, the, the, the materials that I use in my jewelry, I think, as you see, you know, there's all, all different kinds of materials, but oh. mani manipulated differently. That's yeah. yeah, that's a cup, yeah, you just put it on one ear. Yeah. Um, yes. at, at the clothes that you were modeling, when you were doing it, were you modeling saris or were you? No, no. Uh, very rarely. I've done a lot of print. Sorry, Prince, but not Runway. Uh -huh. Runway, I, would, I have done a couple, but it's just a lot. Yeah. yeah you just, there's all this fabric. Now yeah. it's very different in India. They have the draped sari, they have the zippered sari, so it's just a zip. Um, and then the fabric, I, that to me I don't like either, because it has to be the key. It's a thousand years old. Women have yeah. been wearing it like that for so long, so. Right. Uh, that is what uh, I, I see a sari. Yeah, you know, breaks. Stuff, yeah. it breaks from tradition. Um, so, if I'm, I was following correctly, so then you're saying you, you ended up starting a, a, a show production? Uh, like yes. A, a fashion show fashion production show. So, company? Yes, so I started that at 20 uh, because I was already modeling and doing shows, and some of it I didn't get, some mm -hmm. of it was just like, I can do that better. Yeah. So that, that's the thing, you know, if this is what they do and you just don't have to continue doing the exact same thing. Think outside the box and I got a, an assignment for the, uh, it was the World Trade Center uh -huh. in, in Bombay. It is these two towers that they had just built and they wanted, uh, uh, and it, in Bombay at that time there weren't tall, so many tall buildings and they wanted to do a fashion show. So I made a pitch, cold, just cold turkey, this kid, 20 year old. And, and they said, you know, because I had modeled before and I said I had experience, gave them how and why, and they said, okay. Hey. And I was shocked yeah. and it was amazing. The, the lady that I modeled with, the troupe I belonged to, Jeannie Nauroji, I loved her and I learned a lot from her. She loved me, but she couldn't believe that he, I'm doing her, what she does. Yeah. And now this, this could, would have been her thing to do, but so she came to the show, wow. and and it really, her, her uh, loving it was validation, you know, for me. And it was like, yeah, I can do this. So I did that till I left. I left at 24, five years. I, I modeled and did shows, and but you know, just learned more about clothing. The dhoti is, uh, I like the sari, but it's it's nine yards, and I never ever. It's a Maharashtra uh, dress, typically from Maharashtra where, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's at the museum for sure, uh, where it's, it's a sari. The sari is wrapped around you, right? and then there are pleats, and you tuck it, and then you take the color and throw it back. But with the dhoti, after the pleats, you actually take one end and you tuck it back here, so it's like pants. So you have your full, you get totally moved, and then you tie it tight around your waist, and then it's over. So it's modest, but I love wearing a dhoti. You know, now it's quite fashionable. Uh -huh. Otherwise, in the old days, it was just the servants for dhotis. Really? That's it. This the class that cleaned the because they can't clean the floor and whatever with a sari. Yeah. So they had to, you know, tuck it in. But now it's so fashionable in in, in India. Oh wow! So yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love wearing a dhoti. How? Um, 
Um, how do you think it's different working in India versus New York? Well, I, I've been here 44 <laughs> years, you know, yeah. so, uh, and it, it was different, India's different now. India is uh, a country to watch. For sure. She's flying. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the most populated country over, since the last two years, so beat China. But, uh, but also that more than 60% of the, of the people of the workforce is under 36 years old. Really? So there's a, you know, it's, it's a country that's just moving ready so fast, <laughs> ready to go. And yeah, so there's, there's a lot of uh, new industry. And uh, so, and embroidery is a very big part of it because yeah. it's, it's, a, it's an old China and India. But Indian embroidery is, you know, I don't know what it through political reasons. When, you know, when it became communist, a lot of artisans just stopped embroidering in in China. In the old days, Chinese work. If you look at old Chinese embroidery, it's so beautiful. They have a butterfly wing with ten shades of yellow, wow. and you don't even know where one shade starts and the other ends. They split silk thread to get that degradé just right. So it, you know, embroidery can be just so delicate. And, uh, it's such a vast world. There's so many different. I have seven thousand swatches in my house right now. <laughs> I've designed twenty-five thousand in my in, in, through my career. Wow. So it's um, yeah. So I took one thing and stuck with it. Mm -hmm. And now uh, it's from being a model, from designing with Naeem, then you know, working with designers in Europe. Elvira Elbaz, uh, John Paul Gaultier Couture, McQueen Couture, Armani Privé, Lan Van, of course, Ralph Lauren, uh, Oscar de la Renta, um, so many. I worked with 30 designers in Europe, so I was in Europe seven months of the year, and my kids were 10 and 12 when I started. I was just an absent mom after that. <laughs> no, I was there a lot, but you know, it was nine had to kick in and, because he was home. But it took me, I had to travel a lot. And uh, it's always for the shows. So sampling and, you know, getting, taking everything, taking it to India, and bringing it back within two weeks already. It's just stress level up to here. And I had to quit. After 12 years of that, I quit and I started my own collection, which is the jewelry. Um, so how did you get the idea? Um, well, this? you know, uh, when I realized that that tool covered pearl necklace, that it just, I, I made that up one afternoon at, at a hotel because of what he wanted to do with the pearl. Yeah. And when it went the way it went, it just encouraged me to do your own thing. Yeah. But it did, I did make, it was very successful and very interesting to work with these designers. And John Paul came, John, John Paul came to India four times with me. Really? Yeah, because. Uh, he wanted, he loves India. And couture, for couture, he really wanted to, uh, he wanted his mind blown. He said, show me what you can do. So I said, come to my factory. And he would come and he'd sit, it's all men and they all sit on the floor and I'd give him a stool and he'd sit by every, you know, each one of them and start with something. I said, now go to Rajasthan for a week and come back. And he, it would blow his mind what, what, he, what he could do. Yeah. And um, did any of you see the, uh, his exhibit in Brooklyn, at the Brooklyn Museum? It was his couture about two years ago. Jean-Paul Gaultier. Jean-Paul Gaultier's yeah. couture. Uh, I didn't. Did and there was about 18 pieces there that oh I had gosh. done. And really? I'll give, yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. You know, the, yeah, there was the Eiffel Tower, which was done in that stippling uh, effect. But uh, there was one pair of tights, which uh, I'm so crazy, really, to go there. Uh, he wanted snake skin tights. I said, so how do you do that? So we used snake skin. I mean, now all that is out, but this is about 15, maybe 18 years ago. And I made them cut all the scale as it is on the skin. So the, the spine, the center is wide, the scale, and then the, there's three other, four other scales. So they would cut it and sew it from the back. The spine is in the back. And then this, the, 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 the rest of the scales came all the way around. Now, how do you sew it? So I had to get this plastic leg to put it in the, in the hose. First of all, if you get a hose that won't rip, 
you know, very strong. Uh, and, then, and then they sewed each scale on. Wow. And then when you put that on, I mean, it just, that's couture. Is there a photo in there? I want to see this now. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not, it's not in, in there. there. But, but there, there are the, the go to. That was all Gautier Couture. You should, you should actually go through the book and pass it around. But that, that is the Couture and all of this. So that, that's this, this is only with the size of the bead that we created. The Eiffel Tower, the, you know, the uh, uh, trees and the uh, clouds. And this is all sterling silver. Which is, you know, I, I, don't, I haven't put anywhere who, which designer it is, but that's Lamba. These are all the necklaces that we created. After that, we just went great. So you can go through there last time. Um, but yeah, it was, it's, it's very exciting. I mean, I'm 67 years old, and I don't want to quit working ever, because what I'm doing is just so much fun. Uh, I just got back from India two days ago. I'm so jet lagged right now. I have to go out from here. Oh my gosh. But yeah, but it, it's it's exciting to do the next season. I mean, I get so excited. Charlie knows it's like, ah, I went and found this kind of material. Did you show the beetle wings? So, that was around. Yeah, but you know, just the beetle wings. So this, of course, now it's all everything you want to buy is, uh, you know, I mean, what you use in your materials is not, you know, you can't use fur anymore, and you can't use. Uh, what else is it that you can't use? Uh -huh. No snake skin, and you know th that kind of thing. It's yeah. all quick. So, yeah. what do you Exotics. find? Exotic. Yeah, yeah, I like I like things out of nature. Yeah. And so you, I use ostrich feathers, and but the beetle wings are they're the Christmas beetle wing. They during Christmas they just drop their wings and they make new ones. They molt. So it's you just pick them up from, and they're so beautiful. That's uh, what is that way. That Nina's holding? Yes, yeah. that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are beetle wings. So those will keep their iridescence. That's a natural color, iridescence. And will keep that color forever. And do you it could break. dry them somehow? Or they no, actually no, they, are dry that they, hard? No, they, they fall off. They, because these are the wings that they're using. Wow. When they're making the new wings, they're soft till they get to the air. Let, you know, butterflies. But they're, they're strong enough. The, the, I went to the museum, that, that's where I got the idea to use it, to the Asian Museum here in New York, and they were showing a Tibetan robe on, you know, on a doubt, was like that, the back of it. And there were two of those beetle wings, and it's 800 years old, that robe. They were still the same color. Wow. Now, you could break it, but they don't get any more fragile. Yeah. I mean, if you stepped on it, it would, if you, if you did that, it would break, but... We've never got a return that, you know, the wings are broken. Yeah. It, it could fall off because the stitching broke or, or it's old and it's been, you know. Also, they move around a lot when it's on your face. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, so fall. those are the kind of materials I, I use. Uh -huh. And I, I go to Bali, Colombia, I went all to the, to the fairs. To, I go to Premier Vision uh, in Paris. Uh -huh. uh, I would go every year to see, you know, uh, fall and spring to see What's the trend? What, what's the new color? What's, you just, it feels like you're walking through the halls and through osmosis, you get to understand what's happening next season. Yeah. What, it's, it's so, it, you can't, I can't explain it. And so, because I, you work a year in advance, as, because I'm, a, I'm, I'm showing the designers an idea. Uh -huh. So, and that idea is going to be the show in September to be delivered in February. And, you know, so it's, it's, it's like that. It takes a year. Wow. And, and it basically just sits in your head, and, like the tool, the different kinds of tool, the colors in fur at the time. The, there was a two-tone fur for, for a while. And I said, that's not going to stick. But I think it is because yeah. it was everywhere. Yeah. And then the colors just come to you. It's like, and you follow it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and it's... Other than that, is there, are there other places you go for inspiration? I mean, it sounds like you're traveling well, India, for it. India, yeah. for sure. This, this, uh, you know, last week I was in Jaipur, and I've been buying my materials. I, I use a lot of semi-precious material, um, and I've been buying it. Where, where is uh, Five Mountain Gems? 
somewhere in the Middle West. I don't know, somewhere in the middle of the country. And um, they, we, we, we get all our stuff from there. And they come here, it pack, they come to New York in packages, it says made in India, and I'm sending it to India. So it just didn't make sense. I found a source this time in Jaipur that uh, carves all, you know, all semi you know, um, agate, um, lapis, malachite, uh, quartz crystal, red, pink, blue, clear, um, uh, opals, um, just beautiful stones. I found the source. Wow. And, and it's in my own country, but I didn't know how to get there. To, I finally, uh, you know, went to Jaipur and by luck. And, and now I've started a new thing, so it's fashion up until now, but there is, fashion does go into other fields, now I'm doing home furnishing, but it's all embroidery. So embroidery is, I would call myself an expert, when you spend 10,000 hours on something, you're an expert in it. <laughs> I've probably done, you know, 10 times that, because yeah. it's, the last 30 years it's all with embroidery. And I sit with my artisans, I sit with them, and so now we're doing tapestries and curtains, and and uh, it's it's a whole different. But it it all, I'm using the swatches. All my yeah, there's one swatch. So that was uh, the original. That's the original swatch with beads and uh, with scratchy you know the material that you couldn't possibly sit on. And now we just finished doing that's that is what's that's a sofa and pillows, and so if, can you bring it here for a second? Uh, I just want you to see the delicacy of it. Look at the French knots wow. and the silk threads. Yeah. That's all done by hand. Wow. This took over I was gonna 10, say, days. 10 days. 10 days for wow. one man. And it always should be on one hand with one hand because not everyone's French knots are the same size and the same shape. Uh -huh. It's so individual. It's it's really quite interesting. Wow. But the home furnishings is is so different, but so much fun. Yeah. And in the end, the, the whole the whole thing is about uh, embroidery. Uh -huh. You know, in the end, so to, with all the stitches that I I try and learn each and every stitch. Not each and every. There's thousands. Yeah. But the ones that I use a lot. Yeah. And. Um, it's, it's easy, sometimes I see it in my dream. It's so great, especially when I'm working with them. Like for the last week, uh, I've been with my, with, with my team. Mm. Uh, I'm just in front of them because we're designing a new collection and it's, it's good to come in. But it's when, when you're in it, you're so wrapped up. <laughs> it's and, all you can see when you close your eyes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, but also if, if, you, if you love what you do, uh, you're not going to find work a chore. You're going to love going to work, and I I love my job. That's great. And you know, pick the right thing, pick the thing that will make you happy. Charlie, to yeah, be happy with what you're doing. You know what, and go go deep into the field of whatever it is that how, makes you happy. How often is it that you get over to India? Uh, three, two to three times a year. I've already been twice this year. Oh, wow. yeah. And you'll go for like a 10 day stretch? And uh, this time was three weeks because I went for a big so party. Yeah. Sabia Sachi, uh, this Indian designer, was having, he was opening his flagship store in Mumbai. Oh. And he's a very dear friend, so he wanted me to be there. And then uh, my friend from Bergdorf, Linda Fargo, and her boyfriend, we went to Jaipur. Oh, wow. And that's where I found all the sources for my, I found hand loom fabrics for, for the home furnishing, which is absolutely unique fabric and that's what it's all about yeah and I work with decorators so it's not I don't I don't uh, have my it's all expensive you know it's, yeah uh, the curtains that for, for one of the rooms uh, from the base fabric that comes from Italy and it goes comes to me it goes to India for embroidery then it comes back it goes to the curtain maker to be, to be made and then it goes to the plate to the house and it has to be hung. Oh, wow. One curtain for one room could be 250,000. Wow. And it's traveled 100,000 miles <laughs> to, uh, before it gets hung. Yeah. 
So um, it has to be something spectacular because they're going to look at it for a long time. They've put so much money into it, and, and it, that's what excites me too. So I, I work with decorators, the top decorators, who do the homes of. I, 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 I'm bad about, you know, I forget that, that I sign an NDA and I pop my name. With the person I'm, whose house we're doing, so I, don't, I said, don't make me sign anything. Yeah. Just don't tell me whose house I'm doing. So right now it's a Hollywood couple. I just don't know which one. <laughs> and it's her, it's her naked body. She wants it in her boudoir, so we're going to be embroidering her, her whole. Oh, wow. There's a picture of her. There's and no you don't face. know who it is. I don't know. There's no face. <laughs> There'll be no face, but I have this body to embroider. Yeah. So it's it's exciting. Yeah. You know, very. All, every all these projects are so different and and unique and, and exciting. And I I you know I, I'm a grandmother now and. Someday I'll have to stop working, but I don't want to. You yeah. know, it's like it's because uh, the next project is more exciting enough. And I'll just, uh, there's a few new clients that I know that they, they just work in LA and just be a whole different world. So um, it's, it's, it's fun, you know. Someday I'll stop working. The, 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 the curtain lady, Kathy yeah. Larry Jean, she, she designs cotton. She's, uh, she does all the top de uh, designers work in, in an atelier in, in New York. And she's 74. I was like, she still runs this big operation. You can keep, you know, if, if you're excited about what it is you're doing. Yeah. It's, yeah, you know, like a Joe Biden. It's the key. He's 80. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. For you better know. or worse. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but you, this, uh, your website you kind of scratches the surface, it sounds like, on what it is that you're, you're doing day to day, because you have all of these uh, special projects that you're yes. working on. And, and I also noticed that you have a pretty robust wholesale presence as well, with, you know, you're selling on Bergdorf, yes, yes. and, um, yes. I don't know, where else? Uh, oh, at Saks, <laughs> uh, Neiman's, uh, Stanley Korshak. Uh, you know, through COVID, we lost a lot of stores. Yeah. And now everyone has moved so much. Yeah. Um, the, the the buyers have moved, and you know, so when we get back to them, they don't know us. And yeah. So it's 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 a whole new, and it's through COVID. It's in the middle of COVID that I started my home furnishing. Oh, wow. So it's just pivot to do something else. Yeah. As long as that one, the the constant part of my world is embroidery. Yeah. So. And, and my factories in India. And now, you know, it's like I, I have to give them work. Uh -huh. I feel responsible. They, you know, they have families and they, 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 this is their only job. This is all they know. Yeah. They've studied it their whole life from, from their parent, from their father, you know, and the father uh, taught. So there are some that just use a stick needle, a stick needle, which is like that. Wow. And some just use a crochet needle. It's basically, one hand is doing this and the other hand is doing this. Oh my gosh. It's like this. Sounds this very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> and like how many that. factories do you have? Two? Two or factories, two? Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, but you know, one factory is uh, my, my husband's family factory, which is, uh, I mean, there's 3,000 people wow. that I can tap into it. When I'm doing a big curtain job, it's like, and I, I don't want six months. I, I, that's the other thing, I deliver everything so fast. Yeah. Because, yeah, and, and the jewelry factory is mine. So we have 12, between 12 and 18 people uh, in, the jewelry. in the jewelry factory. Oh, wow. Yeah, but these things, you know, they, 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 some of it gets done very quickly. How many will you make of, you know, one of Every these season is pieces. about 50 or 60 styles. styles. Yeah. And yeah. How, and, but how many per style? Are they all one of a kind? One of a kind. All of them are one Yeah, of and okay. every, I, I'm a little crazy because, Every season is so different from the last, you know. It's like, why yeah. would I bring back that one that did really well? But I think, and no one in the world is doing jewelry like mine yet. Yeah. So I'm going to just stick with it, you know. Yeah. We'll, we'll do it differently. Because it comes easily. For sure. I, I've done it for so long. So that it also, once you change the material, the whole thing changes, changes, anyway. changes anyway. That's true. And um, how, how do you publicize about what, it, what you're doing? What uh, types of we're not good at that. that. That's why Charlie's there. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I, I am looking for someone. I need someone. You know, I, I'm also, I'm, you know, I'm a boomer. I, Instagram and TikTok, and I don't get any of that. 
I was in India with the most beautiful, in the most beautiful places, and didn't post one thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like I just, I just don't. I, I, I don't know why. It's not human nature. It's not. Yeah. Not, not even. It's not even something that I can want to do. A lot of my friends my age will do it. Um, no, it doesn't. It just. I don't care. Yeah. You know. And and so I, I mean, if I did. I, I am going to hire someone for social media, and you know, because I know that is the platform now. My goddaughter, who's 13 years old, she wants to. She made a TikTok with me in my house. She came over for her to hang out and have dinner with me, and, and wore, we, we also have headbands that are quite crazy. Uh, and and she put on the headband and we were just dancing. I mean, the amount of look. I mean, you know, our eyeballs that came on that thing was shocking. She's 13, so it's like, I bet it's the way of the future and I've got to uh, get on it, but yeah, we're going to find that person. <laughs> yeah. That's great. What have you found to be the hardest part about running your company? Mm, hardest part? Yeah, uh, creating a good team right now especially. Yeah. You know, after COVID, so much has changed and the, the team broke apart. And I went back to their homes, and so um, that that for me is the hardest part. I am looking for the right people. Yeah. You know, you know, someone for production, uh, for social media. Uh huh. And there's not very much else that happens. Most of my work happens in in India. Yeah. Which is, you know, that that's the main work. It comes in then, uh, and sales. The salesperson is important. We've just started the platform door. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. It, it's just starting off now, but uh -huh. we don't know how long it's going to be yeah. before it takes off. But it's not bad. I mean, we we do well. Yeah, the, you know, the jewelry sells itself. Um, but yeah, it more being at Bergdorf is a big thing. Yeah, because um, it's one store in the world. Yeah, and people from all over the world will come to. Worked up to see what's new, and they sell. And it's at Linda's at VG. Uh -huh. uh, my my product. They were. It was on the first floor, but that's fine jewelry, and it didn't really work. Yeah. But um, now it's uh, um, people go there and say, oh, "It's at Bergdorf," and that that's how I get a lot of stories. Other items. Yeah. And they sell two to three pairs a day. Wow. Every day. That's great. Yeah. They, well, and what a cool, you know, statement to be saying that you're wearing these one of a kind. Exactly, yeah. one off, and then it's one season, and it's gone. We don't bring it back. Yeah, you know, so it's, uh, yeah, it's collected. Yeah, our cool. online business is not bad, and that's really good because it's retail. Yeah. So uh, yeah. And how? What do you think is the best part about running your own company? The best part, I the creative process. Yeah. That to me, and the travel. You know, when I love to go to trade fairs uh, in Bali and Colombia and India because you will, it's all artisanship. Mm -hmm. You know, the, yeah. and Jaipur in India especially. If you ever get a chance to go to India, uh, go to Jaipur. It's where, it's, uh, you know, Diana Wheeler coined this phrase, uh, shocking pink is the navy blue of India. And it's true. <laughs> Everyone wears this, this bright color all the time. In Jaipur you'll see it. There'll be a sea of coral or shocking pink turbans at its wedding. And oh you're looking gosh. at them and they're just a whole... So happy. Yeah, so <laughs> happy. Like, so flying up my India's full of very bright colors. Um, you know, we just... And they put every color that even doesn't even work together and somehow it works. Printed blouse with another print sari and, you know, and, and it's just, that's how they are. They just, even the, the ladies in the fields, you see them plan it. Right, you can see them standing out. You know, the colors are just so bright. Yeah, it's, um, that's fun. Yeah, <laughs> it is fun. The creative process it really is what turns me on. It keeps me wanting to continue. What does your creative process look like? Do you, do um, you kind of have a vision for the whole season, or you just sort no, of no, no, no? It's make it uh, fun. Yes, yeah. it sometimes starts with the material. You know, the material speaks to me. Ah, oh, this is how that's going to be. Like feathers, feathers are like yeah. You know, just for volume. If you saw the earrings, how light they are. They're like air. You don't even feel the air. Like a feather. Yeah, like a feather, literally. 
and, and then uh, uh, museums. I go to museums a lot. So, uh, um, and also I bought a book on Clint, right, you know, recently. So I'm doing a lot, for home furnishing, I'm doing a lot of borders of Clint and this. So now, you know, that, that little uh, appear, it, it, it's clipped esque you know, because I do my own thing with it. It's yeah. not exact, uh -huh. but so go to the museums and something that turns me on. Uh, we went to Lisbon and went to the museum and saw the jewelry of the royalty uh, from 200 years ago. And I just, you know, so you're not using precious materials, but you're looking and took a lot of pictures and I'm m making a collection of that. Pins, the monarchy, mm -hmm. the English monarchy, the, the, the jewels, the way, uh, the fleur de the, you know, you make versions of that. So once you have these thoughts in your head, then, and I have my tool with the, with my factory. So I take pictures and they, they draw it out and then they work on it right there, it just comes alive. Yeah. But instead of using a real sapphire, we're using a lapis, you know. But it's still semi-precious and beautiful. It came from the earth, you know, gives energy, yeah. <laughs> Who do you feel like is the most interesting person you've met throughout your career? The most interesting persons? Well, in my, in my work, uh, yeah, I would say Jean-Paul Gaultier, uh, Elbert Elbaz, for sure. Yeah. I mean, he would, if, if you're familiar with his clothing, it was almost always just draped. You know, there was a drape here and they would, would form a sleeve and then there would be another drape over here. And often when I'd have meetings with him, there'd be a form and just yardage. And he would just pick it up and drape it and pin it. And then and it was this dress that I could see myself wearing to the most beautiful party. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. and, and unique. So there's, and then, you know, the team, so that's the thing with the team. How do they trans translate that? You know, yeah. because it's not one pleat, it's just a, you know, a, a bunch of fabric and he turned it and pinned it a certain way, but it made a beautiful shape. Wow. And then, so how to get that off the form and make it into make a dress. It and it's only one hook in the back and one oh seam. Wow. He, he loved the raw edge. Everything was raw edge. Um, no zippers. Very few of his pieces really have, have a lot of his clothing. I love it. I love Lanvan a lot. When, only when he was at the helm, you know. Yeah. And yeah, so uh, meeting him was, was incredible. And John Paul Gaultier just like out there. He's completely out there. Uh, he, one show, one couture show. Uh, I think I have a picture in that, one, in that, in that book where uh, he had the girl's hair up, and he wanted to put flowers in the hair, but he put a whole dozen of red roses, stem and all. So the <laughs> roses are here, and then the stem is over here. I mean, just, he's just wild. Um, and then he had the whole face, body, everything covered. This is before Balenciaga did it, uh, you know, two, three years ago. Yeah. Where there was, the face was covered and everything, but he did that. And then he covered his whole atelier, every, light, every chair, everything was covered in fabric, so nothing could move. So he'd go way out, like just out on a limb, really. Yeah. And, and so it was uh, to, to watch people's mind uh, work the way that, you know, it's it so much to learn. Catch up to what he'd done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so much to learn. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, is, uh, is your husband involved very much in what you're doing here? No, no, no. 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 Yeah, yeah, I don't. Keep Please, it separate. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, obviously, you're you're looking to hire people now, and you've hired many many people through the years. But in a world, you know, in a field of people who are trying to be unique in hiring, what really has caught your eye to set someone apart? Um, you know, someone who can wear all hats because it's a very small company. You know, someone you, you whatever it is you do is what you do. One, uh, you know. Uh, if it's production, or social media, or sales, or, you know, that's it. That's all. Those are the three uh, arms of my company. But to be able to do uh, all of it, you know, to be able to understand all of it, not do it, you don't, you know, one doesn't have to, but to understand that, yes, this, uh, what, what, like, you, you shipped out a whole lot of stuff that uh, the factory needs for the next collection, for the, for the next big order that came. So, which, 
ball, where do you get it, the feather place, where, where do you order, you know, the clasps, the, the uh, clips, yeah. or, you know, and then getting, so that, that's production. And then sales, what, what are our sales platforms? Go to all the stores that we've sold in the past, before COVID, and call them, cold call them, and then we just got this new platform, Jor, J-O-O-R, and Charlie's been working on it, and it's, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a platform that you can put imagery up of your product, and little mom and pop shops, basically, or specialty shops, are able oh, to come purchase brands. it. Uh, big brands too, yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. it, it's so they came to us twelve years ago when they opened, and that that's what they were then. Wow. Now everyone is on tour. Even Neiman Marcus prefers to shop to, buy, to shop ah, tour. That's yeah. Great. No, they, 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 they've evolved a lot. Yeah. And, and now, especially with everyone, you know, working from home and so, Jor has, COVID's been good for them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. now it's, uh, I mean, I joined this year, which is uh, three months ago. Yeah. That's great. So, yeah. Because it takes, I mean, it's a lot of work for a sales representative to be able to show your line to everyone this way. It's all in one place. Right. And they can right. kind of pick and choose what they might like. And of course, if yours are one of a kind, it must be even more challenging to get. Yes, exactly, because it's not from there. last season that it's right. this, it's the same thing. It's they're all different. So yeah. uh, we we produce. I don't know. This is a very very popular style. So it's online. Yeah. And uh, it's it's about eight years old. Uh -huh. But they still order it. Really? So you can order anything from that. We do take styles away. We take down styles that uh, we don't want to produce eight hundred you know, different styles. Yeah. So how, how many do you think we have online right now? I want to say maybe like 70. Something yeah. like that. So you can, you can pick on some old styles too. Yeah. But yeah, these two are old styles. But these are all new. All that is with feathers. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. There's a, lot, a number of people in the room who are thinking they want to launch their own company one day. And I wonder what kind of advice you might have for them. Yeah, find the thing that makes you happy. Find the thing that that, uh, that comes easy to you. You know, I didn't go to college. You know, I, I couldn't be writing books. <laughs> it's, that's not happening. I mean, even though I, there, there's uh, when they've told a story, it's gone into a book. But that's someone who likes to write and interpret a story that. Uh, but if, what is it that makes you, uh, that you, you, you can't, what, what do you dream about? You know, when you sleep, with, a lot of my work comes to me in my dream. Because I'm obsessed, when I'm, especially when I'm, when I'm designing. So what it is, the, what is it that, that you want to do? And it's not one thing, look how much. Uh, I also had a furniture business for a little while before I started the embroidery. Uh, because uh, I, I wanted to contribute. My children were young. I would, whenever I'd go to India, I would go to all the palaces, the furniture, the palaces that were selling their furniture. So the best furniture, wow. our deco palace, I, I would buy the whole thing. Oh my gosh. And then put it on 40 foot containers and bring it to New York. We had a house in Connecticut in the, the garage to put. And then I had five stores that would come and buy the furniture. So it's not. It's not something that I studied to do. It's not something that was my passion. But it just came upon, I, I went to this furniture shop and, I, and he said, oh, I get my stuff from all these places. So I went. I went to the palaces. It's just, it's just one thing after the other. It's, a, it's an entrepreneurial head. If you can find the entrepreneur inside of you, that could be, you know, this is a business. I, I could make this into a business. Um, start at home. Make, if you're good with your hands, make something. And yeah, I mean, that, that, so the trajectory has just been uh, from one thing to the other. Yeah. You know? And for Hope Furnishings, it's only two years old. Yeah. But it is right now my most successful thing so far. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's very cool. Well, at the outset of the semester, we came up with four questions to ask all of our guests. And um, the first would be what advice do you have for yourself? from when you were just starting out. You could go back and talk to yourself mm. then. What advice would I have to myself? Um, not to flip so much. <laughs> just 
stick it out and wonder, stay longer in what's doing well. Mm. I should have stayed longer with uh, Phoenix, with that company. But I was like, ah, I want to do it for my, you know. That, that really was a cash cow, that company. It really made money, it excited me. I was so, uh, always so excited to do the next collection, to do the next thing. And I'm working with the greatest minds, you know, the, the designers are just, I was learning so much. Uh, but I, I should have stayed longer, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, uh, but I wouldn't have started this. So, you know, I don't know. But I, I do regret sometimes that I should have, uh, should have kept both. Yeah. But it, 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 it's a, there was too much travel with that. So, yeah. I had to choose one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is the most important thing you learned on your first job? On my first job, be on time. Yeah, I'm extremely punctual. Yes, yeah. because that that's is, a great yeah thing to be <laughs> extremely punctual. I'm yeah. never late. In fact, sometimes you know just have to be fashionably late, so I'm torn about. And, you know, just like maybe get a manicure because I'm too early, 15 minutes too early. But yeah, punctuality um, to uh, yeah to not forget uh, to appreciate. You know, yeah. Uh, whatever someone is doing for you, and uh, to to thank, and you know, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Uh, what do you hate about the fashion industry? So much. <laughs> Spill it. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's sometimes so rapid. You know, it's, uh, everyone is so about the trend, and you have to look. Like this, and you have to have this. And, I mean, I'm I'm going out to a party tonight, and I'm no Manny. It's like I came yesterday, and I don't care. Don't 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 be. Uh, uh, I don't know. Also, trends. Don't follow trends. Um, I mean, I, I I shouldn't say don't. I don't because then you get wrapped up in, and it they will change it every season because it's it's the way they make money, the fashion world. Whatever speaks to you, have your individual style, you know. What, what, what you would put with uh, something you have from when, when you were in school and, and you love it so much. Bring that out and wear it with something you've just bought, and, you know. Fashion is just too rigid. Um, it, it, the classes, it makes people like, you know, it depends on what you can afford and not afford. The high low should be wear, wear the stuff that is inexpensive, but wear it well, wear it right. You don't have to be, uh, don't have to follow fashion at all. Follow your style. Like Iris Apfel, she, you know, the, the lady with the big glasses, is 102 years old, very good friend of mine. <laughs> and uh, she, she's style, her style is impeccable. Some of her stuff has been with her for 75, 80 years. And she's been a collector of, uh, of jewelry and accessories her whole life. But the fact that uh, she, she just enjoys putting the, and whenever she comes out, I mean, however old she is, she has a cane, and, but she's just, she's not fashionable. She's not trendy at all, you know, but she's got, uh, she's uh, known the world over for her passion and her taste. Her taste. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Thanks. <laughs> um, the last question is what is the biggest macro trend you see happening in the fashion industry in the next five years? Oh gosh, I don't know. I don't follow it like that. <laughs> uh, or what are you seeing in your space, your spaces between home furnishings and jewelry? Right. Um, but definitely uh, what goes, uh, it starts with art starts with the museums and it depends on what exhibit is happening in the, you know at the Met oh. or in, in Paris and, yeah. and or even if uh, if it's uh, Monet or you know and then everyone gets inspired by the Van Gogh thing came everyone gets inspired and then it, you'll see a little trend and then it trickles down to fashion yeah and home furnishing it, there's a trickle down to, so, but the trends in fashion, I don't know. I don't follow. Yeah. I know that. Uh, I mean, I 
it's very sad for me to see fur gone and faux fur uh, is now replaced it, which is much more, much worse for our environment than, I mean, don't wear the fur. Yeah. I mean, mink is a rat, really, you know, yeah. we kill cows to eat. Yeah. And so you was going to, I mean, I know the way they killed is, a bit of, is not a good thing, but I'm sure there is a better way to find that. But we're actually ruining our, I just went off topic completely. <laughs> we, we, we ruin, we're ruining our world with, uh, with the faux fur. It, it's just, um, so I mean, if there's trends because of uh, sustainability and what, what should be used, of course, plastic, nothing. So now I love the idea of the bags. You know, everyone has, you, you make a beautiful bag yeah. that you will wear, t you know, a tote bag that you will take with everything. But I, I don't know about what trend is, uh, what's good. I don't know, I don't, don't think of the world like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, sustainable fashion certainly sounds like yeah, a trend. Yeah, really. Or at least people paying more attention to it. Right. I think that's the end of my questions. What questions are there out here? Yes. Um, thank you, by the way, for this day. You're welcome. It's really the question that I have is, um, just recently Dior did their collaboration kind of um, with India and kind of celebrated the artists there, um, which is really interesting to really see that. Um, at my internship, I work at Oscar Lorenzo in the atelier, and I see embroideries like in and out all the time. Um, and I think the company in general doesn't necessarily bring up, they're coming from India and they're coming from these places. And so I, my, the, uh, my question is, do you think that the artisans of India um, have been properly represented and celebrated um, so many houses getting their borders? Very, very, very good question. So, uh, because Nain's great-grandfather, actually great-grandmother, started the business at home. She got uh, artisans, uh, the, the ladies, give it to their husbands because they didn't, they didn't mix at that time. They were in Parda. And uh, so, uh, an embroidery now is now the, one of the biggest company in the world, actually. Lesage and SU Zariwala, which is my, the, the mother company. Um, they, in, in those days, the artisans were just given you have them in your factory and you give them this much per six hours is one nafri. Six hours and they can sit 12 hours. So every nafri, which means every uh, six hour segment, they would get X amount. But every factory would give them, some people were exploited. So my great grandfather-in-law uh, started this and, uh, and uh, Naim's grandfather, the next generation, he made it mandatory that every six, every uh, year, it goes up by this much, mm. and you will not uh, hire the, you know. So because they, they taught when they're young, so they they could start working right away at 16 or 15 or even 13, and you cannot do that. So they have to wait till they're 18 years old. So you study this, and then you study, you learn something else, so you have another skill. So a lot of the kids that are young are. Uh, they know they have the skill to embroider. They can, you know, uh, do that if they want. But they'll go and take a, a, a computer course or something. That you know, there's a lot of call centers in India and do that. But they are getting a lot of recognition and respect now, it more and more. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of a lot of artisans left because they weren't able to uh, feed their families because there are there are people who will exploit, you know, there's factories that you farm, uh, that my company farms out, they will give them, uh, give the job somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So it's not happening, whatever happens under both my roofs are, you know, just, they, they're taken very good care of. At four o'clock, the whole country shuts down for tea. It's so Indian, <laughs> at, at four o'clock, everyone. You stop for half an hour, you have a tea, nice. and you chit chat. <laughs> and the English took that from us. Yeah. Yeah, the English at four o'clock, they must have tea. 
it's tea time with yeah. biscuits and you know. Yeah. So it's and, and they all get their break now. When they have a twelve, let's say they're doing two six hours, they get they they, they serve dinner and you know. But the, that's the factories that our factories do that. Wow. But there are many factories that can do that now. India has surpassed Lesage. Les, you know who Lesage is? The French couturier. I met Francois Lesage. He asked, he asked for, for someone to bring me to his factory in Paris, his, his atelier in Paris, because I was taking a lot of his business. <laughs> so a lot of Indians, when they went around, it was very ethnic. It was, you know, Paisleys, and, and so he wanted to meet me. Mm. And uh, I met his son in India this time. The factory has moved to Bombay and oh, wow. Madras and Chennai. So that now, now the West is coming there. So they they pay better. The you know the environment is better. So it, it is becoming very recognized, and people are coming back to it. The workers are coming back to it. It's a man's profession. You know, it's it's not a, what a woman will do on the side. He was raised to to be this. This was this is what you're going to be. So Naim's uh, grandfather embroidered. He was one of the workers. And then he became the owner of a factory. Yeah. And then his son, Naim's father, became the top designer in India. He, he uh, revolutionized the sari, actually. Oh, wow. Like the pleats would be a different dye, a different color. And you know, it's very interesting with the sari. It's a sari, it's eight yards of fabric. Yeah. Um, um, six or eight, depending, and the dhoti is the nine. Um, but so, and then, and then Naeem was, you know, started, came to America and started off with Halston and did all the embroidery for Halston. That's why Halston didn't want Naeem to leave, um, because the embroidery became such a big thing, you know, with Liza Minnelli and uh, Betty Ford. Uh, I mean, everyone wanted to wear a Halston dress at that time. Yeah. So, yeah, it all came out of India, and now Lesage is in the factories in India, and it's getting it's getting better. There are still people that are being exploited, you know, but uh, that happens everywhere. Um, but yeah, I, I I just love the artisanship. I mean, I'm going to say something that uh, Halton would say: Indians do good hand job. It's like, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I was here to the naughty side. And, so, yeah. But yeah, because the, uh, we're, we're so, they're really good. Artisanship mm -hmm. in India is, because it's it's very ancient. Passed the culture, down, yeah, yeah. It's passed yeah. down. Everything is hand carved. And, um, is, there, be, is there a concern at all about that going away? Or do you feel like it's definitely still continuing? No, the it's generation? not. And that, it's because of, you know, the stores, I mean, a, a designers like Dior came there and they talked about it. They talked about Indian artisanship and they showed it they, mostly on Indian models. And, and they had that, did you see the flower arrangements that they did yeah. all by hand? Now that's called, Rangoli is a very big part. That's what I grew up watching and colors, that's why colors are so important to me. Uh, they, everyone, in everyone's homes, they have a little uh, piece of wood with little legs. Mm -hmm. And that is your Rangoli, which is where you're gonna make a pattern every day. Mm -hmm. Some of them are very, you can do it really fast out of powder. Uh, and some you can, you know, it, you, it can take a long time. I've seen Rangoli being done, uh, it, it takes five hours. And it just, it just with the hands, this powder, making the straight lines. I learned how to do it, watching people. It's just so exciting. They did that with flowers. So they created uh, this beautiful uh, pattern well, I can't remember what the pattern was because I saw it up close, but from top, it was just, when I look at it in, in a photograph, it's beautiful. But it's all by, with flowers. So can you imagine this? The, 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 you, have, you have to finish this before the, before the show, and you can't start too early because the flowers will die. So, you know, it's like, you get it together, and it's, it, that's the yeah. colors in India, are just colors and techniques. Um, yeah. In India, are just incredible. The, it's amazing. It's an amazing, yeah. It's an amazing country. Yeah. Wow. Five thousand years old. Embroidery is thousands years old. Wow. Yeah. When the the Taj Mahal, which is five hundred years old. No, how old is the Taj Mahal? Yeah, 500, <laughs> 530 something years. But it's all up. Uh, um, it's marble, 
and uh, uh, inlay. It's all hand inlay. So you know each each little leaf and the, and the the flowers that. So it's very very tall, and the door as it's very wide on top and it comes down on the sides. So when you're looking up at it, it looks like it's exactly the same size, but it's not, and it's all done by hand. And the four uh, minars, the four towers outside of the Taj Mahal, uh, if there is an earthquake, they, will, they won't fall in, they'll fall out. Oh. So, I mean, that's the, you know, the, 500 years ago, the, yeah, yeah. How, how to do that. But they've had uh, uh, um, earthquakes, but they haven't fallen yet. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, and it is, it is a, you know, it's well, eight, one of the eight wonders yeah. of the world. Yeah. And it's all made by hand. You know, it, yeah, artisanship is uh, India's in the heritage. In the heritage, <laughs> for very, sure. Very big. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions. So you work with you. You're at Oscar de la Renta. Mm -hmm. you, you and you work with the team with embroidery. Yeah, I'm kind of all over. So I design and then I go. I work in the atelier. I was like hands on for 15 hours on Saturday. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Okay. How are you doing? Are your hands hurting? Uh, they're all cut off. Yeah. And I love to touch any white dresses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but good. Anybody else? Any other questions? It's lovely to see all your faces. Thank you. This is uh, such a unique and refreshing perspective. I think very different from everyone else we've had all semester. So we appreciate oh, having good. you. Good. <laughs> Thank you.